Patch 1.7.1 just dropped and it's fixing some pretty nasty glitches and bugs, such as the RPM stacking glitch, the jamming of those semi-automatic weapons, and supposedly it also fixed some of those desync issues between multiple players when they're, you know, when there's one thing happening on one player's screen and then something else on the other player's screen. I don't know if they got rid of the lag completely, but if that's actually the case, then it's a it's a it's a step into the right direction, you know? Especially the desync issue. It's been a very gnarly thing for a long, long time, with people running in one place, people supposedly shooting through walls, people skipping frames and animations, all as a result of the players not being in sync from the other players on the server. It is pretty devastating to the experience itself, as most of you have probably experienced somewhere down the road by now. Um, that's not gonna be what today's video is about though. With today's video, I want to do what I've been doing for two different patches already and make a complete list of the most annoying, consistently reproducible bugs and compile them all together into a video, this video, that shows you the what's in the house, so that during the PTS of patch 1.8, which is almost here, the developers can try to fix these problems, but also so that if these bugs do not get removed, then at least every player is aware of them and can play around them to avoid them. Because let's be honest here, nobody wants to be left sitting with their heels not working in those crucial moments and wipe as a result of it. So what do you say? Let's get this video started. The first one on the list, it's an old but gold one, the support station healing speed. As uh, some of you might know by now, since patch 1.6, the support station heals at a very inconsistent rate. It's supposed to heal you every second, but you'll see that often enough, it actually skips healing every other second. Which then results in the stations not healing as much as they say that they do on the UI. The reason that this is happening is because since patch 1.6, the developers added a new functionality to the support station where every time that it heals a player, it applies an invisible debuff that lasts for a second, and this debuff does not allow players to be healed from a support station again. The reason that this was added was to prevent people from stacking 7 or maybe 8 support stations worth of healing in the last stand game mode, which also came out with 1.6. But the thing is, the debuff actually lasts a tiny bit too long, which causes it to prevent healing even if there's only one support station at play. So even if you have one support station, then you're still not gonna get all the healing from it. And this whole mechanic, it can also cause a weaker support station to block the healing from a stronger one, as the weaker support station could heal a player, for, you know, a very tiny amount, and then apply the invisible debuff to prevent the stronger support station from healing it. So, in the case where you have two support stations, which is not all too rare, uh, players are actually gonna get healed for even less. Next up on the list, I've got something that we've already talked about as well, and that is the problem with placing down deployable skills. Oftentimes, when you try to place a support station or a turret on the floor, the skill indicator on your UI above your health bar, it will turn red and then when you try to place the skill your character seems to be jamming trying to put it on the floor and glitching out and you know doing the animation but then not actually putting it down. This is also an issue that has been there since patch 1.6 and it is actually related to the hitboxes for the skills themselves. You see, since patch 1.6 the game does not allow you to place a support station or a turret underneath another agent on top of another skill or too close to the walls. So when you double tap it and uh, the space where the station would land is already occupied, well, it simply doesn't get put down. And if you try to throw it, and in the meantime, while well, it's mid-air, somebody occupies that space where the station was gonna land, this could be a player, this could be another skill object, this could even be an NPC if you're, if you're that unlucky, then the skill also gets put back into the player's pocket. This is pretty annoying because then you think the station is out, but hey, suddenly you haven't used your station yet and it's, it's bugging and all that stuff. Now, seeing how the support stations and the turrets and all those things do not have physical hitboxes, like if you put them on the ground, your character can just walk through them, they don't have anything that blocks anything, and seeing how the EMP effect is applied through every wall and object in the game anyway, I see no reason for this type of thing to be in the game. There's no reason why you wouldn't be able to put a support station underneath a teammate. And there is a way to do it properly as well, because the current Seeker Mine, for example, it works in, a, in an ideal way. You can throw it underneath players, you can throw it inside of skill objects, and even though there's something going on when you try to throw it too close to a wall, you can still run next to a wall and then instant cast it. It's not like the skill will actually bug out. So maybe take a look at the Seeker Mine and then see if you can apply it to the station and the turret as well. Um, next up on the list, we have the bug where the support station continues to give the players full immunity, even if the support station itself has been hit by an EMP effect. So uh, the way that this works is, is that you have to stay in your immunizer so that you're immune, and then someone else has to EMP the support station. 
And then when the support station is under the MP effect, you have to walk out of it and then walk back in. And if you do it correctly, you'll notice that you will get the immunity buff underneath your health bar, even when the support station is still under the EMP effect. And this isn't just a visual thing. If someone then tries to shock you or put you on fire, for example, uh, you will not be affected. You will still be immune. Uh, this buff is also permanent. So even if you blow up the support station, then fast travel to another checkpoint, maybe even die. And then you put out a new station and that station gets EMP'd as well. Well, you're still immune. As long as you stay in the support station area of effect, this buff will remain active, no matter what happens to the support station, no matter if it gets EMP'd. If you leave the support station area of effect, however, you will still keep the buff icon underneath your health bar, but you will not actually get the immunity. In that case, it's just a UI thing. So just remember, if you have this bug, you can just use any support station, you just have to be in the area of effect, disrupted or not, and you'll still keep the immunity. What is quite weird about this as well is that on other players' screen, when they shock you or put you on fire, they will see that you are either shocked or put on fire. This creates that well-known, hey, that guy's shocked but he's still moving effect. Now, additionally, this whole effect, it's also applied to the other mods of the support station. It means that you can do the same thing to the ammo box, which then grants the player 15% skill haste and infinite ammo. And you can also do this for the revive station so that you can still get revived even if the support station is EMP'd. So in other words, Classified Reclaimer is going to be pretty strong. But yeah, that's it for that bug. But we're not done with the support station yet because I've got another really, really nasty support station bug that occurs when the owner of a support station moves further than 100 meters away from the support station. What will happen is that the game will stop rendering the support station and thus the game will automatically put uh, the skill back on cooldown because it thinks, hey, support station's gone, so, you know, put it back on cooldown. The problem is, is that the skill isn't actually on cooldown because as soon as you move back within the 100 meter range, the support station will reappear again at the place where you placed it first. Everybody else that is still around the support station will be able to see it spawn in just as always. Except for the user, he's not going to be able to see the support station. You know, because according to the client, his support station is back in his pocket. It's been on cooldown. The result is, is that the owner, you know, he can't see his own station anymore, but everybody else still can. And while the station is active for everybody else, the owner cannot use the support station. You will see me press the button here, go through the animation, but I can't actually press it down. The fun thing is though, is that the area of effect from the support station is still there. So even though I can't see it, I can still enter the effect and get immunity and get heals from my invisible support station, so to speak. I've also got a couple of first aid bugs now. The first one is with the first aid defibrillator, which has the revive effect. But that revive effect, it does not work when a player is already being revived by a life support support station. And it also does not work when the player that is using the defibrillator goes down before the first aid has a chance to revive the target player. This is very strange because players can still receive the heal from it, just not the revive. And it's also a little bit inconsistent because uh, the rest of the skills, such as uh, the support station or the turret or any deployable skill out there, they continue to work even if the player is down. They don't disappear until the player is completely dead. The healing over time effect from the first state defibrillator also does not work when the player either drops down in the heal from above or enters the heal area of effect from below by climbing up an object. And it also does not apply the healing over time effect when the player enters the area of effect under a status effect that disables the use of skills such as the EMP or the on fire effect. Next up, when the player is aiming his skill, such as the first aid or the smart cover, or when he's holding a deployable skill in his hand, such as the support station or the turret, and then gets hit by either a bleed, a blind, or a disorient status effect, the player will put that skill back in his pocket. This is a little bit weird because all three of those status effects do not disallow the player to use skills and thus they should not force the skill to be put back into the player's pocket. And yes, we tested this. This is actually the status effect at work, not the grenade impact, because we also tried it with Harmful and Predator's Mark, which gave us the same results. As soon as the player is put on with a bleed effect, he will automatically put the skill back in his pocket. And it doesn't only apply to skills, it also applies to grenades. So when you're holding a grenade in your hand, and then you get put on a status effect, you'll put the grenade back in your pocket as well. Very annoying. Talking about grenades, you know, nice segue for the video. When the player grabs a grenade out of his pocket while sprinting and then throws the grenade as fast as possible and then instantly continues sprinting, the grenade will land on the floor without a red area of effect indicator around it. This is usually referred to as an invisible grenade. The timing has to be pretty pixel perfect or frame perfect I should say. 
Uh, and I'm not very good at it yet, but as you can see, with enough practice, you can do it consistently and it works with every grenade type. Next up, we also have a legacy bug. We have the first aid skill bugging out on uneven terrain. I don't actually know how to trigger this one. Sometimes when you shoot the first aid on some uneven terrain or when you shoot it against a moving player or whatever, the first aid will get stuck in midair and start floating down very, very slowly. Or in some cases, even fall through the terrain, causing it, you know, of course, to not heal the players and also to bug out the other skills as well. While I do not know how to 100% reproduce this, I have a pretty good idea right now, but I, I can't be sure because I, I can't get it to work 100%. I, I do have a solution for it, and that is to make the projectile that you shoot identical to the smart cover projectile. You see, the difference between the first aid projectile and the smart cover projectile is that the smart cover pretty much sticks to everything that you shoot it at, and the first aid, it doesn't. The first aid is supposed to fall off walls and off the ceiling and then land on the floor so that people can walk into the circle. Now, allowing the first aid to stick to the walls and ceiling, just like smart cover, it will be a big change to the functionality of that skill. It will be a change gameplay-wise, but I believe it will be a good change as, in my opinion, with a lot of healing experience under the belt right now, it will allow the players to use the first aid in more useful ways where you can more easily heal players through ceilings, through floors, and also through walls. And, of course, the main reason as to why I would want this change is that so we don't have to deal with this annoying bug anymore. Because apparently, we can't get rid of it. You know, we tried, many patches, but we can't get rid of it. And as a side note, uh, the first aid is already kind of inconsistent right now. You know, one time you shoot it at the ceiling, and it drops down. The other time you shoot it at the ceiling, and it kind of stays up there. So yeah, for the sake of consistency alone, change this to how the smart cover works. Next up, another famous one, the double reload bug. This one triggers if you empty an entire magazine of a weapon and then pop a skill or get interrupted by a stagger in the middle of your reload. What happens is, is that the reload animation gets interrupted and you start to use the skill animation, but the game still thinks that you're reloading your weapon. It allows you to interrupt it and then still count the reload. It's very nice, you know, it, it makes the game more fluid. But, because your magazine is completely empty at the end of the skill, the game thinks, hey, the magazine is empty, and then it forces an automatic reload on the weapon, but then just after the reload animation starts, the game recognizes that you already quote-unquote reloaded the magazine just before you used your skill, even though, if you're really honest, you did kind of interrupt the reload animation. This only happens if your magazine is completely empty, because if it's not, then the game will not force you to reload your weapon, and thus by the time that you want to reload, the game has already recognized that you have already reloaded. Uh, there's two ways to fix this again. Either the developers should not allow the magazine reload animation to be cut in half by popping a skill or that kind of stuff and then still have to reload count, or they should make the game recognize that the magazine is reloaded a little bit earlier when the reload is actually interrupted and they're still letting it count. Then we get to the interaction between triage and crit safe. I feel like a broken record even mentioning these things and you might ask me the question when I'm going to stop complaining about these two. Well, my answer is, is that I'll stop complaining about it when it's fixed. So, here's how it works. If the player has both critical safe and triage equipped and the player pops a medkit in his last health segment, the player will also get a proc of triage, reducing his skill cooldowns by 15%. That's not supposed to happen. Let's fix this. Now, with this video, I on purposely wanted to leave out any map breach glitches, since you'll never really get rid of all the map breaches in the game. And usually these things are kind of open to abuse as well, but I recently stumbled upon two different ones in the dark zone, and I felt that these needed some attention as well. First up is this spot next to the DZ09 West checkpoint. If you stand next to this barricade for a few seconds, you can go in cover or you can stay out of cover, doesn't matter. If you stand next to this barricade for a few seconds, the game will consider you to be out of the map, and it will put you in a loading screen, teleporting you back a few meters. Very minor, you know, probably takes a few seconds just to fix, but it does need fixing. And then there's also the stairway vault glitch, which can be done in any of the underground staircases in the dark zone. Uh, what you need to do this one is to equip a pistol and then stand on the edge of the very first step on the staircase and then make sure that your vault button, the, the prompt thing on your UI, is sitting just underneath the start of the slope of the railing. If you have that, then simply press forward and vault. And what will happen is, is that your character will vault through the wall on the opposite side 
and he will fall through the map. Now the reason that you need a pistol is because the pistol vault animation is slightly different than the non-pistol vault animation. You know, so the pistol vault it puts you slightly lower than all the other animations and that's causing you to actually go through the wall here. In addition to that, if you do this while you're rogue, you will just like with any of the other wall breach glitches that were there in the past, you will get teleported to the closest safe house with your rogue timer still active. And uh, you know, it's pretty important that this gets removed as well. But yeah, that is pretty much it for the most annoying bugs and glitches that I'd like to see fixed for patch 1.8. However, I still have a few pet peeves as well, which don't really take as much of a priority. But if they happen to be quick fixes, if the developers look at these and, you know, think they might be worth looking into, then, uh, you know, be my guest. So I'm going to mention those right now. With the first one being that you can bypass the underground directive that puts both skills on cooldowns when you only use one skill. I, I kind of forgot the name about it, but anyway, if you use both skills at the same time, or close to at the same time, you can still use both of your skills. Uh, especially with the pulse, you can see this happening, because it takes a little while before the game actually puts the skill on cooldown, and within that time that the pulse is scanning, and you know, trying to gather those enemies, you can still use your other skill, so... Even with this directive on, you can still use both of your skills pretty much, and I don't think that's supposed to happen. Then next up, there's also this bug where the damage numbers disappear from the player's UI if a new player is in the middle of joining your group. It's just a UI bug, of course, because you continue to deal damage, but I thought, hey, maybe it's an easy fix. Uh, there's also this thing with the consumables, where if you use a consumable and then go down, you will lose the effect of the consumable, but the buff icon still stays underneath the player's health bar. So either they're supposed to keep the buff, or this icon is supposed to disappear. Pick one, I don't really care. And then last up, you can also duplicate the boxes on, for example, missions such as Clear Sky. If you start the animation to put the box in and then die in the middle of it, you'll see that you will still continue to put the box in. You will complete the objective, but the box will then fall back out, allowing you to use that same box for the other power sources as well. In some cases, it might make the mission a bit easier than it's supposed to be. Something might worth looking into as well. But yeah, that's it. That's really all for this video. As you can see, most of the things that I mentioned are things that I stumbled upon simply through playing the game. Lots of healing skill problems, because, you know, I play a lot of healer builds, so obviously I'm going to notice those first. And I played a little bit of Underground, and I played Clear Sky, so that's where the other, you know, bugs come from. But I'm pretty sure that these are not all of the bugs in the game right now. Maybe there's some really annoying ones that I just don't know about, or I just forgot about. And if you have something, then let me know through Twitter, or through the comment section, and I'll see if I can include it in some sort of ETF forum post for the 1.8 BTS. Um, that's gonna be it for me today, though. This video is already long enough, so I will see you all later, or... Like they say, in the Netherlands, see you later.